Grace to you and peace from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. The sermon text for this Good Friday at Emmanuel Lutheran Church in Mercedes is from the Gospel according to St. Mark, the 15th chapter, and I shall read verses 42 through 46. Now when evening had come, because it was the preparation day, that is, the day before the Sabbath, Joseph of Arimathea, a pr prominent council member, who was himself waiting for the kingdom of God, coming and taking courage, went into Pilate and asked for the body of Jesus. Pilate marveled that he was already dead, and summoning the centurion, he asked him if he had been dead for some time. And when he found out from the centurion, he granted the body to Joseph. Then he bought fine linen, took him down, and wrapped him in the linen. And he laid him in a tomb which had been hewn out of the rock and rolled a stone against the door of the tomb. This is our text. We were not there, actually, in person 2,000 years ago, but we do have pictures. Well, not pictures from then, but pictures from more recent times. The problem is, there's disagreement on exactly where the tomb of Jesus is located when they laid him in the tomb. Uh, Karen's going to pass around some pictures. There will be two pictures, which will be from a location called the Church of the Holy Sepulchre. Uh, this was a large church that was built several centuries after Jesus rose from the dead by the Christians who felt that this was the site where the a tomb of Jesus must have been. And you can go and visit there to this day. On the other hand, there are two more pictures that Karen shall be passing around, which is another location uh, uh, about a mile away. It's called Gordon's Tomb. And it's a most fascinating location. Uh, there is a tomb there that you can visit, hewn out of rock. But the, 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 the feature that is most curious about this one was it's a hillside. And if you look at the club, at the pictures, if you have the pictures, you look at, you, you can see the, the shape of a skull there, the eye sockets, the nose sockets. Uh, but I don't know if it's either one of those two places. Uh, the, the picture that I like the best is the fifth picture that Karen's going to pass around. And that is uh, alongside of a road many miles from Jerusalem. So it's absolutely not the burial place of Jesus, but it's so authentic looking. It's just a hole in the side of the hill with a round stone rolled in front of it. Obviously, that's not where they laid him in the tomb. But let's consider some of the people who were there and see in what way they might represent us so that we can ask one another, were you there when they laid him in the tomb? The Jewish leaders were there the close-minded, hard-hearted Jewish leaders, knowing Jesus' claims, knowing that he said he was the Son of God, they condemned him nevertheless in an illegal trial. We know that they knew he said he would rise from the dead because they requested a guard from Pontius Pilate. They even knew the grave site. So yes, they were there. They asked Pilate to put a seal on the stone. For our benefit, folks, because that authenticates the miraculous resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. They were there, helping us to know that Jesus was laid in the tomb. But have they no embarrassment? They knew, everybody knew Jesus was innocent. Pilate knew it, remember? I am innocent of the blood of this just man as he washed his hands. The centurion declared it after the fact. Surely this was the Son of God. Jesus is the innocent Son of God, crucified and laid in a tomb. The tomb and Calvary's cross were near the city, and Passover crowds had gone by. And not just the Jewish leader, everybody knew about the tomb. Had nobody, did, did nobody have any feelings of guilt or shame? Surely the word must have gotten out about the unjust trial. They denied the responsibility when Jesus came to give back the, the pieces of silver. See to it yourself. His blood be upon you. The field of blood is what they called that 
field, that place that was paid for by those pieces of silver. Oh, the Jewish leaders were there. The soldiers were there when they laid him in the tomb. No doubt standing in awe, for there had been darkness from the first for three hours upon the earth, and a great earthquake had come. Graves were opened, rocks were split, and the veil in the temple was torn from top to bottom. The word of the forgiveness was heard by those soldiers who were there. They heard him say to them personally, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. Forgiveness words to the ones who executed Jesus. In awe, that centurion confessed Jesus to be the Son of God. They were there. No doubt, some of them feeling and experiencing a degree of regret. Some of them surely must have been convinced of the innocence of Jesus after the fact. But they had simply carried out their duties, as you or I must do sometimes in disciplining our child or in a congregation exercising church discipline really hating to do it, but it had to be done. Maybe they were there also in their ignorance, initially not knowing for sure who this Jesus was, really, probably also ignorant of the significance of what was going on here, the import, the effects that we carry on for generations and generations to the end of the world, the results of the death of this, the Son of God. And again, they were there, ironically, authenticating the death of Jesus. They were professional assassins. They were professional crucifiers. They knew how to kill people, and they knew when they were dead. And so they stuck a spear into the side of Jesus. Blood and water came forth, which they reported later to Pontius Pilate, who was amazed that he was dead already. And the disciples were there. Yes, they were. The women were there in fear, in fear for their own welfare and well-being in fear, for none of them came forward to claim the body of Jesus. Peter and James and John, who had asked to sit on the right and in the left hand of Jesus, were there in fear. They did watch, says Mark in the 47th verse of this chapter. They were there and watched in despair. Their leader was now gone. Who would lead them now? What should they do? What would happen to them? And they were there also in confusion and wonder. Why did God let this happen? This is the Messiah, the chosen one of God. But had they forgotten his, che che had they forgotten his teachings? The Son of Man must have go up to Jerusalem, be handed over, be despitefully used, smitten, crucified, and the third day rise again. They had heard it. But now their leader is gone. Would he be raised again? I don't think they believed it. Why do I say that? If they had believed that he would rise again, wouldn't they have posted a vigil? Take turns. Let's run shifts and watch and see him rise from the dead. But no, they were there in their fear and their doubts and yes, their unbelief. Joseph of Arimathea and Nicodemus were there. Actually, these two men, after Jesus, are the main characters in this paragraph. Verse 43 has an interesting remark by the Gospel writer Mark. It says that Joseph of Arimathea, taking courage, went to Pontius Pilate. Both of these men were leaders of the Jews on the Jewish high council called the Sanhedrin or Sanhedrin. Both of them formerly had been reluctant. Nicodemus is the one who came to Jesus by night. Uh, Joseph is the one who is, ex is described in the scriptures as being afraid of the Jews. But now, when needed, they came forward. And I ask myself, why? What happened to them that at this particular time, when God needed someone to bury the body of his son into the grave, why these two men now? Why now should they be bold and brave, showing respect for this Jesus? For their burial preparations were thoroughly respectful. We are told that they brought spices, and we are also told that Joseph had a linen sheet and wrapped the body of Jesus in it. John gives us more details in his gospel account. 
He said that they had spices and they ripped, they, they wrapped him in strips of linen cloth, as is the custom of the Jews to bury. Think now of those sacrilegious movies of the mummy. And that's the way that the Jews would bury the individual. They would wrap, they would take that linen cloth with which they had carried it, that would, that would, that would have served as the casket. They would take that linen cloth and then rip it into strip, strips and wrap the arms, the limbs of the body and the body itself with spices in the wrappings. That was their custom. They respectfully buried the body of Jesus in an unused tomb. Very interesting, unused, so that if a body came out of that tomb, it could be only one person's body. There was only one resurrection that was proven that day. And also this fulfills the prophecies of Isaiah, and he made his grave with the rich. They were there, privileged to serve the Lord their God, and they did what they could, even if it meant endangering themselves. Well, Jewish leaders, Roman soldiers, and the women and the disciples, and Joseph, of, and Joseph and Nicodemus were there. But in what way would we have been there? Would we have been like the Jewish leaders? Are we in any ways close-minded to the Word of God? God word, God's Word may clearly state something, but we have other ideas in our minds and we fail to seek and follow the guidance of God, even in the customs in our church from time to time, ignoring the principles that God sets down in his word in order to get our desired result, or covering a sin with a show of right and refusing to admit a fault, as surely did those Jewish leaders. Are we there with such sins? Are we there like the centurion and the soldiers in awe of Jesus but also from time to time regretting our sins and our omissions? Are we there with the soldiers from time to time also ignorant of all the facts, yet still willing to learn and open to what we see and hear from Jesus? And when we finally get it, with the soldiers confessing, truly, this is the Son of God. As we do so confess, we are there. Are we there like the disciples and the women from time to time, cowardly and disappointing our Savior and letting him down so often, or questioning or doubting God's plan in our lives? Are we there when we question what happens as if God were not in charge? Are we there having been forgiven and given the gift of the Holy Spirit after Jesus has risen from the dead? Are we there, like Joseph and Nicodemus, forsaking our former cowardice and standing up boldly for Jesus when he is needed? Respectful to Jesus, willing to serve, stepping up, glad to be used by God in his way and his plan of salvation from time to there. As we believe in him, as did Joseph and Nicodemus and the disciples and the women and the confessing centurion and soldiers. We are there in our cowardice, in our repentance, in our re absolution and forgiveness of sins as God pronounces that forgiveness earned by Jesus when they laid him in the tomb. And we are there also with our bold acts of faith in this risen crucified, blessed Lord Jesus. Amen. And the peace of God, which passes all understanding, shall keep your hearts and minds through faith in this Christ Jesus unto life everlasting. Amen.